In unit construction, we complete one unit at a time before joining it to another. We made the two blouse fronts and the blouse back, and then joined them together at the shoulder seam so they could remain flat. Then we made the collar and the two front facings. So we've made six small units and joined them together, and now we have just one large unit. And following through with the principle of unit construction, we do everything we can to this piece, which means that next we're ready to make the buttonholes and sew on the buttons while this is still flat. When I put the facing and collar on and pressed it back, I left the outer edge of the facing free. This needs to be anchored down permanently before I put the buttonholes on. So lay the facing back onto the garment and stitch in place, some uh, place below the seam line. Then repeat that on the other side. Here at the top, the uh, shoulder edge of the facing needs to be anchored down to the shoulder seam of the dress. And that's done by hand tacking. The kind of buttonholes you plan to use on your garment will determine the way you join your facing and your interfacing. I plan to use machine-made buttonholes, so I joined my facing and my interfacing before I attached it to the blouse. In the next lesson, I'll show you how to apply the interfacing to your garment when you're going to make bound buttonholes. And now let's get our buttonhole attachment and our buttons. The length of the buttonhole is determined by the diameter of the button plus the thickness. So select a template that will take care of this length. The template controls the dimensions of the buttonhole. Be sure you read the directions before attaching your button holder, because different machines have different ways of putting it on. Then before we put the attachment onto the machine, remove the presser foot. And then cover the feed dogs with this plate. Before you fasten that down tightly, be sure that the needle comes right down in the middle of the hole in the plate. And then anchor it down securely. Now we'll put on the holding nut for the attachment.
this goes over the screw on a needle bar. And this slips under the holding nut. And tighten the holding nut. You'll want to check your buttonhole by making a sample before putting it on your dress. Make this sample buttonhole in a scrap of the fabric you're using to make your dress. And put a piece of the interfacing in between. Then next we want to be sure that the upper thread and the bobbin thread are both between the attachment and the plate. And here's an easy way to get that done. Slip your fabric under the attachment and make one stitch and then pull those threads to the side. We use this dot to represent this point of our basting where the buttonhole will start on your garment. Slip the fabric under the attachment, put the needle down on that dot, and then Screw this adjusting knob until this pointer ends up at the center back of your attachment. Then before lowering your attachment, adjust the bite with the side lever. This could have been done before you put the attachment onto the machine. Now I better tell you what we mean by bite. It's the width of the stitch that makes up the buttonhole. This is a narrow bite, and this is a wide bite. And the N on the attachment means narrow, and the W means wide. When you make your sample buttonholes, try several different widths for the bite, and then take the one that you like best for your garment. Lower the attachment and stitch. Make the first few stitches by hand and then stitch slowly. Look at your buttonhole after you've gone around it once. For uh, oftentimes, the appearance and the durability will both be improved by going around a second time. An easy way to cut open the buttonhole is to lay it on a block of wood and use a single edge razor blade. Cut first from one end and then from the other so that you aren't apt to let the razor slip and cut the end threads. Check the length by slipping your button through the hole. This is all right, so let's turn to our garment. The buttonholes are made on the right front blouse. Put your needle down at the point where your basting stitch is started. Remove your basting threads so they won't get tangled up in the stitching. Then be sure that the threads of your material line up with this edge of your attachment. If you were making a dress, instead of demonstrating as I am, you would go ahead and make all of your buttonholes. 
But I want to go on and show you how to sew on a button. To locate the position of the buttonhole, match up the center fronts and the buttonhole over your basting line. And then put a pin in the end of the buttonhole. Hold it in place and unbutton it. Then use double thread and make a stitch right where the pin went in. We're not using a knot in the thread, so we'll fasten the thread with two or three stitches right on top of themselves. Then bring the needle up through the button and down through the other eye of the button and through the cloth. And then slip a toothpick under that last stitch. Bring your needle and thread up and over the toothpick several times until you feel sure that the button is on securely. This toothpick is giving us extra length in our thread so that we can have that length to form a shank. And this time, bring your needle and thread up between the button and the cloth. Wind the thread around to form the shank between the button and the cloth. Bring the needle back down to the wrong side and fasten with two or three little stitches. This buttonhole is neat and quickly made. It will serve nicely on house dresses and children's clothes and such items. If some of you are planning to make dresses for better wear, you may wish to improve upon the appearance by using a bound buttonhole. So next time, I'll show you an easy way to make a bound buttonhole. Thank you.